Uh, welcome everyone to Product One's technical web series. Today we're looking at Creo parametric piping design. This is exciting because the current base package of Creo parametric does include piping and cabling extension. These are extensions that you used to buy uh, before PTC moved to the whole subscription model and you get a lot more benefits out of this. So before we start, there are two ways in which one can create piping uh, inside Creo Parametric. The first method is non-specific driven uh, piping design. This is where you configure your own line stock. We'll talk about that in a second in terms of what is a line stock. You route your own pipe and this en enables a lot of flexibility. The other method is called specification driven piping. This is where you're utilizing a PNID diagram or piping and instrumentation diagram to design your pipe. This is main. This method is mainly utilized for shipbuilding and and so forth. So let's get started. Starting with, of course, the manual piping driven uh, design. So what I have here is a simple assembly. The one thing that you're gonna have to do is go into the piping environment. As you can see, just like with all other Creo extensions and add-ons, you just go to the application of that entity. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create my own line stock. So remember, as I said, this method here, which is manual piping, I have to generate my own line stock. So a line stock, let's give it a name. It's essentially that these are properties of your pipe. So if I were to give it a name or even a standard, so to speak, whether do I want my pipe to be hollow or solid? So that's where you define this. So the most important part here is obviously the, the diameter and of course the thickness of the pipe. So let's even make it 3.5. I can even design decide in terms of what is my corner type? Is it going to be bends or fittings or both? Most importantly, if you already know the weight of your pipes, or even the length, you can put those there and you can specify to a certain extent even the bend radiuses that you're going to put on this. So I now can save this line stock and I can use that now to generate my pipe and how you do that. So it is important to note that for pipe design, having coordinate systems are, is of paramount importance. So as you can see, I've got coordinate systems here at certain locations. So these coordinate systems enable me to set up a start point and on top of that, start routing or extending my pipe. So as you can see, I have the power to specify the length of my pipe I don't have to be fixated to that particular start point because what I can also do as well is I can create a pipe following a specific curve. So what I have now is two separate segments of a pipe. That's not a, a, a big issue because I can combine those two segments utilizing the connect feature and I can specify even the offset uh, uh, directions on on this. So that is fine and all. One thing that I want to showcase before I move along is I'm having a coordinate system here that is not in the same uh, position as let's say the pipe. So this is the coordinate system that I'm talking about. As you can see, I now want to generate a pipe that will go this way and probably go in that particular direction. This is in, in 3D format. So how do I do something like this? Well, it's quite easy because I can define my starting point and extend my pipe this way or choose to say, go along a particular coordinate system, specify the offset. The offset uh, of this, it's going to be that coordinate system, but then we choose the Y value. We say, let it be zero. So essentially all that I've done is taken that pipe and elevated it to the same height as that coordinate system. I can now apply that. I can repeat the same process in the X direction. I'm happy with that. And as you can see, I'm busy generating uh, my pipe and it's automatically putting on the bends. 
What I can do, however, is I don't want bands anymore. I want to put on a fitting there. So I can say, now that I have this, I can say, how about I extend that pipe up to that particular point? And quite interestingly enough, it recognizes that I've instructed it not to put in a bend there because I want to put in an elbow later on. So that's the first part of, of just routing a pipe. Now, what I can do is put on fittings. So there's an array of fittings that one can actually put in the piping design. Of course, you have to specify whether your fitting is going to be breaking a straight break or in the corner. So let's choose this one. And I'm going to choose, let's say, a gate valve here. Specify where I want to place it. Specify the offset ratio to, say, make it 2.5. And what the system will do to say where is going to be the, this, the reference point for that. And this is what I have. And at this point, I can even rotate that fitting if I see fit. No pun intended. So now that I've got a, a scenario like this, I can say now I want to put in a corner fitting there. So I can do that with the aid of saying I want to put in a corner fitting. And then I get to choose that, look, I'm looking for an elbow and I choose different size of, of the elbow from here and I specify which is the corner. And by me saying, okay, this will now be made an elbow. Now, what I have here is still a surface, as you can see there. However, I can convert that into a solid by just simply saying, make this a solid. And I obviously select my pipe and say, now that's a solid. I don't know, I no longer need now that uh, surface that depicts a pipe because now my pipe here is a solid. That's essentially how you would go about generating piping utilizing the manual method. Now let's go into the specification driven piping. What you see there is Creo schematics. Creo Schematics is the PNID uh, or schemat uh, schematics design where you're doing your piping and instrumentation design. So as you can see here, I'm already having leg one, two, and three with an array of reducers. And this is the bore size of the pipe. As you can see, it gets reduced up to 80 and so forth. However, I did not complete the last uh, section on purpose because I want to show you how you go about this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to spe specify my specification on this and just like that, sketch my pipeline. Now, quite interestingly enough, it does state there that there is no label on this. And by virtue of me specifying a label, it now shows that this is leg number four. So it sees that. So now, just like with anything else in Creo, this is not just any line. It actually has certain properties and I can tell the system to automatically calculate the, the pipeline automatically and I can apply this. As you can see now, the ball size is 150. So it actually takes on what's existing with the current specification. Now let's actually apply uh, these uh, reducers. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm going to say I want you to put in a fitting and I can specify my type of fitting. I can say this is the reducer and this is the one that I want. I'm going to place two reducers just like we've got here. As you can see yet again, there are no properties assigned to this reducer. How do I assign that? I simply come here, I can even say apply data set and say, what is currently the size of the pipe when you're leading up to the producer, I can, uh, to, to the reducer, I can say it's 150 the ball size. Then I specify what is the exit size and this is what I have. And then I say apply and okay, and that's what I have. This is now 80 and I can just quickly update that. But before I do that, I will just do the rest of the pipeline. Just like before, I can specify here to say that at the moment where I am, the entry size is 80 and I want to reduce this to about 50. And I apply this and this is what I have. Immediately when I refresh the labels, as you can see there, 
I'm having the both sides of 80 and on the other side is 50. And that's important because this pipeline matches with this one here that's having a T section. So I can save this XML file and use it for this particular design. So this is typical scenarios where you're having something as complicated as this, where I can say now for this sub assembly, this sub assembly was generated utilizing that schematics. As you can see here, we've got all the three legs except the leg number four that's missing, which I've just defined now. How do I go about completing this design? Just as before, I'm going to say, let's go to the piping module. The only caveat here now is instead of me defining a line stock, I am going to specify the XML file, the one that I've just created. And as you can see, automatically it gets populated. What is the bore size? Where does it get all this bore size from that PNID diagram or schematics design? And of course, I can specify now the number of the leg, and I can even say the here to say, look, where am I defining this assembly? It's going to be defined in this sub assembly. And the reason for that is because leg one up to, let me just move this uh, aside. So leg one to four are in that sub assembly. So let's get started. You remember we spoke about coordinate system. So you see the significance of that again. So what I am going to do is choose my start point. And this is going to be the start point that we setting up for this. So I'm going to select that start point and just off the bat, I can say now extend that pipeline to a specific distance. As you can see there, I can simply drag it and that's what I have. However, I can utilize the same technique that you've seen with manual piping where I rely on offset because I know that I need to join that pipeline onto this. So the system is very um, intuitive in a sense that I can assume that, oh, because I'm happy with this, I now need to join this branch, uh, these two pipelines. But that's not correct because I know that this is 150 and the other one is 50. So let's have a look at what happens when you say branch the two. At the bottom, it gives me an error that states that you cannot pre, uh, uh, branch the two because they've got uh, different sizes. And that's the reason why we created those reducers in the first place. So the first reducer, it's going to be here. And I'm going to specify that, okay, what's the offset value for that particular reducer? And this is what I have. It automatically reduces the pipe going in the opposite direction. And of course, I can continue now to the second reducer to make the pipe to be 50. So all of this information is directly coming from the schematic diagram. Last but not least, I can now choose to say that, let me continue routing this pipe. And this time around now, I'm going to just say branch this up to here. Of course, I can modify the entry angle. I just want it to go uh, uh, in 90 degrees. And mid production of my pipeline, I can say, look, I don't want this to be a bend. Instead, I want it to be a, a, a fitting. So I can choose that option there. As you can see, it generates an environment that is suitable for my fitting. Now, what I have here is a pipe going into another one in perpendicular. Uh, all that I need to do there is insert a fitting in this location here. The system will identify what is the fitting that suits this. And I can even preview the fitting to say, okay, I'm happy with this. So let me apply it onto my design. Last but not least, there's a whole lot of other things that a person can do here. I can choose to put on a, a band here, or I can even choose to put in an end flange at, the, at, at this particular point to say that, how about I put in an end flange in this particular area, and I can even specify what values and so forth. So I'm not going to do that uh, with this one. All right.
So probably last thing that we can actually do is put in, let's say a gate valve. So I can say, what am I uh, putting here in the middle? Uh, am I putting on a, a gate valve and what's the size of it? And I can say, oh no, that's not the one that I'm looking for. This is uh, what I'm looking for. It's a gate valve. And what I want to show you is that I can also orientate these fittings in terms of their angles if it's not conducive to sit in a particular position. So I'm going to say I'm happy with this. And last but not least, I can now make this pipe to be a solid. And now that I've uh, made this a solid, I can now say uh, save this and close. So now that's a solid structure in which I can come back now onto my piping view and say, let's have a look at the leg number four. As you can see, there's many issues and one of them. Now, automatically, the system does give you an indication where there's certain elements missing. As you can see, in my instance, there's a flange casket that's missing, including, of course, the elbow there at, at the end. So I can choose to say, what do I want to do with this? Do I want to insert a bend or an elbow? Of course, I'm going to choose an elbow for this. And that's essentially how it generates this particular assembly. So when I open this sub-assembly, for an example, the one that I've just generated now, which is obviously the piping sub-assembly, you will realize that it now contains the four legs that I've just defined. The only thing that I didn't complete with this one was to put a flange at the end. But that's essentially how one generates piping using the two methods, which is manual piping, which we saw before, and this particular method driven by Creo Schematics, which is called spec-driven piping. Please like the video. Do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.